I'm Debbie Lyons and welcome to Lyons on Design. We have an interesting show for you today. Susan Dyson is here from Daybreak Adult Care Services. Yes. And I tell you, she and I were chatting the other day mm -hmm. and we started talking about accessibility and homes and keeping your customers as safe as they can be. And we Absolutely. talked about things in the home that um, we may not pay attention to mm -hmm. that can easily be switched around to create a healthy and home environment. Right. Tell us a little bit about what you do. Well, um, Daybreak Adult Care, we provide services for um, senior adults predominantly, but any adult in their home who needs some help, maybe post-surgical um, or something ongoing with personal care. And um, what Linda, the owner, likes to do when she goes in and meets the family to learn about what their needs are, is she also wants to provide um, you know, other services and one of them being safety assessments in the home because that's really important because that can prevent falls yes. um, and other injuries that can, you know, down the road lead to a whole host of other things. So that's what we're doing is trying to improve the quality of life and prevention is part of that. So what we're going to do on today's show is do three different things. We're going to look at safety, we're going to look at potential hazards, mm -hmm. then we're actually going to go into a bathroom and take a look at some things that you specifically can do to make your home as safe and healthy as you possibly can. We're going to do it with Susan, with Mike Lines from home, Lines Home Instruct Lines Home Construction okay. and Inspection and me. So stay with us here on Lines on Design. We are here today again. I'm Dr. Debbie Lines and this is Mike Lines. Mike does a lot of assessments and we talk all the time about universal design and ADA compliance. Mm -hmm. And I tell you, we've talked about this a lot. People have always asked me how I went from interior design to um, a doctorate in psych and I think it's it's really a pretty easy segue and we talk about it all the time because your home and your living environment we want to be as healthy and as safe for you as it can be whether you're getting older and more mature like I am or whether you are young and have kids or just at any age you want your home to be as safe as it can be we thought it would be fun today to actually come in and assess a home we have a senior who lives here who has some accessibility issues mm -hmm. and wanted to just kind of take a look around a normal kitchen to see things that were really helpful or would be or things that we could do to improve that. If we can, Mike, one of the first things you said when we, when we walked in is um, let's talk about escape. Fire. Mm -hmm. Fire in a kitchen is probably the most dangerous thing you have. And that always scares you, always, because whenever <laughs> I light a candle, right, he's like, exactly. no, fires are really scary. Fires are scary. They happen here. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, grease fires. This is, fortunately, this is a an electric stove, so the fire is a little harder to, to actually happen, but it can happen. And this is a new so. home. Do you find that you need to access each home depending on when it was built and the Correct. way it's worked? Correct. Okay. The new codes take into account a lot of the safety features that we're that we will be talking about and this is a fairly new home okay um, a lot of the older homes don't have the safety features so it, you know speaking of fire here okay. one of the things that you would have the fire is going to happen here so what you want to be prepared for is to have a fire extinguisher in my kitchen in your kitchen okay you want it not next to the stove actually okay you want it a little bit away from it so that you are closer to the escape in case you cannot. In other words, okay. you wouldn't put it right over here so that you would have to walk around and get oh, it. Oh, I see. I see. You okay. would put it somewhere right. over here so you could pick it up, mm -hmm. fight the fire. If it didn't go out, you still have escape mm -hmm. out the door. And I know even growing up with our kids, it's really important for you, for your care, mm -hmm. for your caregiver, for all of you to know exactly what's going to happen in the event of a fire. Correct. Now, a, a couple of the other things that you you keep saying are um, smoke detectors, which are in bedrooms, and I think we're going to take a look at that, mm -hmm. but also carbon monoxide monitors, which are free, by the way. Um, I know a lot of HVAC companies will actually let you give you those. Give you those, correct. And so they're pretty important. Talk to me if you will. Kind of nice to have your husband here. You can like, and you go push here. You, push him wherever you want to. <laughs> it's great. It's great. Talk to me if you little, if you will, a little bit about the kitchen sink because I know if I was in a wheelchair, I couldn't access this. Correct. Um, one of the things they've done well here is they've used a handle type on the on the faucet. Like a one-handed lever. One-handed like lever, so yep. it's much easier to push and pull so that you can get it instead of something that you have to turn. Okay. Um, if you 
if you had to do something for a wheelchair All right. patient, uh, one of the things you could do, you could retrofit this by simply having a carpenter cut out the bottom edge of this. Okay. Okay, so that the wheelchair and you have a place for your knees to go. It's pretty oh. simple to do. It's not particularly hard. I mean, you know, it's just something that you would have to make look good, which is the hardest part. Well, and I think for any of us, um, money is an object. I mean, it really is. It is. Um, I look at light switches. I think one of the main things when we're talking about seniors or really youngsters too, is plenty of good lighting. What's been your experience with that? Um, my experience is, especially in the very elderly, mm -hmm. um, they don't change light bulbs that often because it's too difficult. Okay. So the houses are usually dark. Um, in, in older houses, they're drafty, so they have big, heavy drapes, which makes it even darker. Mm -hmm. So the, you know, the problem comes in is you can't actually see. You, know, you walk in, they can't see well. They trip over rugs. They trip over just anything that's raised up. Mm -hmm. um, so you want to have the house as bright as you can possibly have it. And you want, like light switches, we were talking about light switches earlier. If you have the option to okay. design your house and design it with light switches and you know that you have an accessibility, then you can put them on the wall. Otherwise, you just make sure that you you have an access to get to those Exactly, switches. we were talking about a clear access with this. And I know we've only got a second in this segment, but I'm gonna run a little bit long in this one um, because I really wanna talk about workspaces. Again, designing for health mm -hmm. and wellness, okay? When you do, when you are um, in a wheelchair, it's important for the width, okay, of your Chair. walkway, is that? And that's a, that would be a standard of three mm -hmm. feet normally. This one happens to be three and a half feet. Okay. Here, you are pushing the limits. You're just a little bit shy of it right here. Mm -hmm. So it so. might be tough. And one of the things, so we don't have to do anything differently, is we were looking at the desk area that's down here. And that desk area, if you were in a wheelchair, is the perfect place to do your cooking and your baking and your mixing. Because mm -hmm. a wheelchair will fit right under there very gracefully. So part of this accessibility assessment isn't all the things you have to do, but it's what you have in your own home that make um, universal design so accessible and so good for you. Stay with us. We'll be right back here on Lines on Design. We're going to talk about some more safety features. <laughs> On design, and we're talking about Freudian slip covers. We're talking a little bit about accessibility. I've got Mike Lines here from mm -hmm. Lines Home Inspections and Lines Construction, and we do quite a bit of work with seniors getting a home ready for universal design to be really accessible. What we've really decided and discovered is that it's not necessarily about seniors, it's really just about health and wellness in your home and how to make it as safe and friendly as it can be. Possible. Exactly. We were talking, we're here in a kitchen, which is fantastic, and this is the new home, as we said. One of the things you wanted to make sure we didn't forget to do is talk about the flooring. Correct. This floor, actually, this house is pretty good because it has a, almost a flat floor all the way through with a very small threshold, mm -hmm. so you don't have a lot of trip. One Wait, thing we why do, is that an issue when you say trip? You mean I might Well, fall. because, you know, people are normal and don't like to lift their feet. Okay. <laughs> so right. they'll stub yeah. their toes and down they go. Mm -hmm. um, this is a slip hazard. Okay. It should be one that does not slip, kind of like mm -hmm. this one. Mm -hmm. See, that one is much stickier. What's that got on just like a it's rubber, just a rubber backing. Bottom? Okay, just a rubber backing. I'm sure it wasn't expensive. But I'll tell you, you don't realize how dangerous these could be, whether you're carrying a baby or on a walker. Correct. Um, you were talking, too, about the tile floor and canes. Tile floor and canes tend to become trip hazards simply because canes may because they, they have a, such a small end okay. that they may actually get caught on a grout line. I never thought so, about that. So it's, you know, if you have the choice, you would like to have a tile that has a pretty small grout line if you know that you've got a, a, someone who uses a cane inside the 
home. Okay, let's walk on through here and I want to go into the living room and talk about some things that are absolutely beautiful but maybe hazardous again as you're aging in place or if you have a family. Mm -hmm. Let's go see this. On our way to the living room, our Mike, our cameraman, I'm like, don't trip over the dog toy. Don't trip over the dog toys. But one thing I'd like to show you here, which is a very good design for people with limited accessibility, mm -hmm. um, they put handles on their doorknobs. Right. Instead I'm of something that you twist, you actually have a door latch that uh -huh. you can actually push down. And you can actually hold on to it also. So it gives you something good to hold on to okay. if you're not quite steady. All right. Okay. And balance is quite an issue, again, as we get a little bit older. We've talked about that quite a bit. Mm -hmm. um, and talking, one of the things I want you to notice in this home, again, it's a newer home. And so it's, it is really a good example of some wonderful accessibility um, options that, that are here. Correct. I love the fact that this is all a one wood level. floor. Mm -hmm. And why is that so important? Well, it gives you less to trip on. Mm -hmm. So you, you pay attention to what's on the floor. Uh, carpets, rugs, mm -hmm. small tables. Okay. You'd prefer to have tables that are a little bit taller so that you could grab onto. And something, again, something that doesn't wiggle. This is an incredible home. It's absolutely beautiful. But with we little children and as we get older, there are some hazards here I would like to point mm -hmm. out. I think for many years we've we've worked hard on collecting memorabilia. There are things that we love and you always want to keep things that you love within your home. I mean, that's what makes your house your home. But when you look at things, uh, when you look at falling hazards, if I were to fall into that little table, there would be a chance if I tried to anchor onto it, it would fall over. Correct. Looking at some of the beautiful accessories here, there's a lot of glass throughout this home. And just clutter, glass pieces are all potential hazards. And I think it's just something to pay attention to as much as anything. I'm not saying remove everything, but I am saying pay attention to what mm -hmm. is a potential hazard. You were talking about the lighting. There's one overhead light here. And the rest is lamp, so it's mm -hmm. not really very bright in here, even though it's very bright outside. Exactly. And I might have you even drop the camera right down here. What do I have? I have dog toys. Dog toys. Dogs, the benefit of an animal far outweigh the risk of having an animal when it comes to universal design accessibility and making your home as healthy as it can be. However, remember toys on the floor, puppies on the floor are all hazards. Right. One of the things I really liked here, again, Two things. I love this carpet because I think it looks beautiful and it really doesn't move at all. Correct. However, it has a lump. <laughs> <laughs> but more importantly, the things that I see in this room are electrical wires, okay. extension cords, stuff that you can trip on. Show us over here what all we're right. talking about. Mm -hmm. Hi, Pop! See? This is the best thing. This is what we love. Uh -huh. <laughs> things that we can trip on. Hi, Hi little guy. But if you look here, you have an extension cord that's just wrapped around this. One of the things you can simply do is roll them up with a, with a rubber band and hide them back behind the, the table. And that makes a so lot of sense It makes a lot of sense. Too. Um, extension cords here, something you might catch your hand on, pull it off, break mm -hmm. it, cause you to trip and fall. Mm -hmm. So you would simply move this back and get that on the back side. And, as, so and I was, as I was trying out some of these things, one of the things, you know, I'm sure that, and I do this all the time, I love to have my animal close by. But again, if I have to go to the bathroom, if I need to get up quickly, if I need to move quickly, this again is a potential hazard, even with a walker, mm -hmm. a cane, or a wheelchair. It, it does, uh, it has the possibility of creating some falls. Correct. Uh, again, threshold going outside. Mm -hmm. What do you do for someone? What are ramps I know are really important? Are they expensive? Are they hard to build? Um, they're not particularly hard to build. Okay. Um, they are only expensive if you're coming some, from someplace really high. Mm -hmm. And because at that point it has a very long way to go to stay at a, at a incline that you can actually walk on. Mm -hmm. So they're, um, but you could take one right outside the store and instead of having a four inch drop, simply slope it out a few, few feet and have a walkway. 
Uh, one thing I would suggest, even on a small walkway like this, is to have something to hold on to, whether it's a handrail, a post, a piece of furniture, okay. something stable to, hand, to hold on to while you're going out of that door and that step down. Well, that makes a lot of sense. Let's go into a bathroom right now and take a look, because I know a bathroom is a place where a lot of accidents do happen, mm -hmm. and I think there are some really easy, preventable, um, accessibility items that we can show off. That was a big mouthful, wasn't it? Stay with us. We'll be right back here on Lines on the Side. We talk about bathrooms as being a place that's especially dangerous for all of us. And I'm really excited to talk. Um, this is actually a very well equipped, handicapped or accessible bathroom. Right. Let's talk specifically about some of the things that make this such a good bathroom and a good example of one. Well, one of the things they've already done is the person who lives in this house mm -hmm. has accessibility problems. I mean, they're, okay. they're they can't move around that well. Okay. So what, what they have is they've already connected to the bathtub a handhold. All right. So that they can actually grab. Can you grab, see this? Yes. See, so I'm they can a good actually fan. grab the handhold and hold right. on to it. Exactly. They've put a chair in the shower and that chair gives them a place to sit down so they're not having to stand there. Um, these and things actually, are these things are actually amazing. They're very good for for tubs and and, and where do you get these? I know Burke's Pharmacy has one. Yeah. For any pharmacy will have any one. Any pharmacy will have them. You can actually you can actually buy them out of a lot of catalogs. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's multiple places to get them. And they're a different heights, so they go up and down to accommodate your height. Correct. And I think it's important to remember when you're sitting down and getting into a shower or bath like this, you sit and then you swing your legs over. If someone cannot have a stool and they want, need to wheel in. Can you accommodate a bath like that? You can. You can actually build. You can build a shower that does not have a threshold, so that the wheelchair can actually move in. And you simply move in, move to your chair, slide the wheelchair back out, take your shower. Mm -hmm. So it's um it's it's actually the best way, the best possible scenario. So you're not. You know, your, your chances of falling are pretty slim at that point. And I, one of the things, first things I noticed is they have a handheld shower. And that handheld shower, again, the goal is independence. The goal is caliber and quality of life. Correct. And with a handheld shower, you basically can shower yourself. And what they also did down here was to put a shelf where you could put your soap, your shampoo, your conditioner, and things like that. And Within can, reach. Yeah, and that makes a lot of Correct. sense. The commode is something. I know that toilets used to be much lower. What's the deal with them now? Well, they've been getting higher and higher. Um, and, and a lot of that was for, so that you're not, because once you get down on a very low toilet, it's very difficult to get back up okay. off of a very low toilet. So um, it's very easy to get down to them, uh -huh. really difficult to get off of them. And so um, yeah, this, this toilet has cool. actually been raised with handles and um, everything you would need for somebody who's who's having problems moving around mm -hmm. and their stability is not that great. Mm -hmm. So they um they've got handles on it. It's high, so she can move on and off of it very easily. Um, that's actually a very good thing there. A couple of things that aren't done in here that might make a lot of sense is lowering towel bars so that you right. would have a towel bar and a towel that would be really low, easily accessible. And there are levers here, but this is a this is a, a widespread set Correct. that have two levers. two levers. What would be a? It would be it would be easier if you had one lever, mm -hmm. um, but you can actually handle two, mm -hmm. providing you can reach them. If you're in a wheelchair, then you need to actually make the cabinet so your knees can fit up underneath it. Okay. And you pad everything underneath it so your knees don't bump into all the sharp objects underneath it, like the drains and okay. the water things. Um, and you make it so the wheelchair can roll in, and then you've got then you can actually reach both of them. It's very difficult to reach across a cabinet and get to both of them at the same time. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Again, we've got a tile floor, which is great for spills. It's great for stains. It's easy to clean up. As we were talking about before, sometimes canes have a problem. They can 
they can get caught in the grout, so pay attention to that. Um, she also has a, a wonderful non-skip rug in here. Mm -hmm. In the bathtub also is a non-skip rug. My biggest problem with this space right here, and not real problem, is I think it would be tough to turn. Could you turn a wheelchair right here? You could turn a wheelchair in here. This is actually large enough. I'm not sure. I've not measured the door. Let me get out of the way. Uh -huh. uh, the door is a little bit shy of three feet, but it's you could actually get one in there, provided it's not a very large one. Do you ever recommend taking doors off? Because I would die because I would want privacy. So that's um, something to consider. Yeah, I mean, you could do that, actually. Um, it just depends on your living conditions, who's living with you. Exactly. You know, that type of thing. And I know that we just, we took a quick peek in where um, our young lady is, and we saw some things that I think may make a house a home. A couple of things that are of interest. There is an address that's taped to the wall just for quick memory recollection, which right. makes a lot of sense and is an easy, inexpensive thing to do. Family pictures are really important. important. They're really important as, as our memory sort of fades in and out. It's wonderful to have that constant reminder. Uh, the other thing that I was really impressed with, and I think is really important, and you and I talk about all the time, paint colors. The light. This is the time when you need a lot of light, a lot of light mm -hmm. colors, and a lot of light colors specifically in your um, paint. And I do recommend uh, a contrasting trim color. The white is amazing. You know, this has been fun. I hope it's been educational is interesting for us. Mm -hmm. And Mike Lines, Lines Home Inspection, Lines Construction, thank you. And we thank you all for joining us and taking time out of your day to join us here on Lines on Design. Have a great day.